Hello, everyone. Um, oh, welcome to AWP, AWM PIT grad uh, seminar. Uh, uh, I'm Farjana Satika, president of AWM University of Pittsburgh chapter. Uh, we have some of our fellow um, uh, colleagues and uh, our faculty advisor, Professor Mata. And uh, we're going to start um, with our second speaker today, uh, Sanjana Agarwal. Uh, Sanjana, could you please uh, uh, introduce yourself with everyone and start the talk? Thank you. I would like to begin by uh, thanking everyone for having me today. This is a great opportunity. Um, I am Sanjana. I am a PhD student in uh, Indiana University, Bloomington. Uh, my primary area of interest is uh, stable homotopy theory and algebraic K theory. But this is a very lucky project that happened. And uh, it started with a kind of women in math project. So we had uh, a lot of, uh, so the, there were a lot of women in our department who were interested in working in various fields which are all kind of related to algebraic topology and we got together and we're like we want to work on something together which is fun and also accessible to everyone and turns out this is a really great area for uh, um, those kind of interest so i'm gonna go through kind of like um introduce uh, introduce this topic and just i want you all to have fun with it uh, like like we did so it would be great if you uh I would be grateful if you would uh, uh, engage with this topic by asking questions, by uh, even opening your videos. It helps me gauge if I'm coming through it because Zoom is such a difficult platform to teach and uh, talk with people. I'm sure you have all experienced that. So it will be great if uh, uh, we have a better engagement um, in terms of like, feel free to ask questions. This is supposed to be a fun talk. This is not supposed to, for me to introduce a subject that I don't know anything about really, honestly. So, um, okay, with that note, let's start. Um, so configuration spaces is an older topic than configuration spaces of graphs. And um, I want to introduce a little bit first what configuration spaces are and then introduce what configuration spaces of graphs are and why they are more tricky. And then what are the results that have come out recently which has made the subject more accessible. So uh, the origin of this area is uh, from a very practical point of view in terms of uh, it originated on factory floors uh, where there were automated machines. So if you have, suppose, a, a, a space, let's say it's R2, and you have N uh, robots here, let's start with just three, and you want these three robots to move around the factory floor and work without collisions, because collisions are expensive, and <laughs> we don't want to pay for that. So how do we make that happen? Configuration space is a space where you look at all sorts of possible positions these three robots can occupy without collisions, okay? So this is my factory floor here. This is my factory floor. The configuration space is the ordered tuple so this is position of R1, position of R2, and position of R3. This is gonna be a three tuple of all the points these robots can occupy in this R2 space without colliding, which means I'm looking at all points X1, X2, X3 in R2 such that no two are same, right? such that xi not equal to xj for any i and j. So the screen work is gonna be rough, but if you guys need notes or any extra information, I am very, very happy to give you all the sources, well-written, very well-written sources. So feel free to ask me about that. So uh, this is gonna be a configuration space. Let's do an example. Let's do a simpler example. So suppose I have this line I have two robots, R1 and R2. And I want to look at the space of all uh, 
the positions these robots can occupy without colliding. Okay, this is something you can draw. So this is why this is a good example to begin with. Now, if my R1, so let's say this is interval zero one. So if my R1 is here, let's say this is position point two, then R2 can be anywhere else except at point two, right? So if I were to draw this now as part of my R uh, in the real plane, then my second robot can be anywhere on uh, zero to one interval except at point two. So this is the only position which is not allowed. Everything else is allowed. If my robot was here, R1 was here, then R2 cannot be here and it can be everywhere else. Make sense? Does that make sense? Right? Okay. So basically my configuration space is gonna be zero one cross zero one, but then accept this diagonal. Diagonal is all the points where Xi is equal to Xj, right? So the configuration space of this thing is going to be something like this, right? So you can see how easily the configuration space can grow much bigger than your original space. If you have n points, it's gonna look like an n-dimensional thing removed some diagonal, some places where there are uh, common points and so on. So it grows really big. And that's one of the reasons why configuration spaces calculations can be difficult. Another reason why it can be difficult is because of the graph situation, which I'm gonna talk about now. So let me erase this part and then draw again the R2 surface and then draw this example that we just did, which is, let's just say this is R1. Now, if I have two robots here and I, they're moving in this direction and I want them to avoid a collision, all I have to do is kind of like take a slight detour. There is a lot of degree of freedom here. There is a lot of movement possible. If I have a robot here, I've just realized that R1, R2 was a really bad notation for robots because I'm also dealing with spaces R1 and R2, so sorry about that. Um, if I'm now dealing with robots on the line, there is not that much degree of freedom. It's a very rigid space. If I want these robots to not collide, I have to do a global solution, right? Like suppose if this was part of, if this was not just a line, if this was a part of a graph which had branches like this, then if I have R1 here and R2 here, and I want R2 to move in this factory line and I want R1 to move in this factory line, the only way I can make that happen without them colliding is I need to switch. So I need to globally solve this problem by making R2 move along this graph to this point, making R1 move to this point, and then reintroducing R2 first, and then reintroducing R1 here. Does that make sense? So there is a difficulty here. The solution has to be way more global. It's not a local problem. And that's uh, the rigidity of the situation makes configuration spaces of graphs a much more difficult problem to deal with. So um, let me look at my notes once and see if I managed to cover all the things that I wanted to say for the intro. Um, Looks like I'm all good, which is great. Uh, at, at this point, does the problem make sense? Do you have any questions? Okay, so um, yeah, any questions now? Okay, so in that case, let's I move. To say that the problem makes sense and I think it's very clear. Thanks. Yeah, okay, okay, great. Um, I'm glad. So. So the configuration space is now our object of interest, right? We want to look at all paths in which these robots can move without colliding and configuration space is capturing all the paths 
where the robots can move without collision. And so what we are looking at is trying to calculate as much information about the configuration space. Now, I have no idea about my audience really. So I don't know how many of you are uh, familiar with uh, topics in topology concerning homology, homotopy. Um, if you are familiar with it, that's great. If you're not, I'll just briefly say that what these tools are designed to do is to actually capture the kind of information about how many paths are possible up to certain equivalence relations that say some paths are same, how many loops are possible. So for example, the this example that I did here, which is R1 and R2, when you're switching the position of R1 and R2 and switching it back, this is a loop in my configuration space. So think of this as a continuous movement. When R2 moves here and R1 moves here, that's a path, right? You're continuously moving in configuration space as a tuple. Then I move R2 and R1 back. And then I do this position again and bring it back to their original position. So what I'm doing is a series of paths that finally ends at the same point that we began with. And so this is a loop. And loops are very interesting objects because they exactly determine how you can switch positions of these robots without collisions. And that's an important information to have if you want to make sure that all the robots can move as much as possible without colliding. So uh, we want to calculate homology and homotopy of configuration spaces because it allows us to capture this information. Okay, so let's um, clear out this screen and reframe now our question. So what is our goal? Our goal is to be able to calculate homology or homotopy, but I'm going to uh, only talk about homology in this talk uh, of configuration spaces. The first couple times we met um, when we were trying to learn this thing, uh, we took the interval and tried to see how many configuration spaces we can kind of like uh, calculate on our own. So like co uh, third configuration space, fourth configuration space. And one of my friend uh, was, uh, went home and was playing with 3D printer once and she drew a model of third configuration space. And uh, so they're, like, this is a fun topic. So what I'm trying to say is if you guys ever feel like you're getting bored but you want to hang out and do some fun problem, I would highly urge you to like just look at an interval and work out three configuration space, fourth configuration space of it, and so on. Um, okay, so with the reformulation of the goal, now let's talk about how can we make this happen. So um, now, configuration space is hard. If you're uh, if you're familiar with homology and homotopy calculations, you know that that in itself is hard to calculate. And there's a lot of machinery that has been developed to make that happen. Uh, one of the ideas that is, I think, central to all of math and is also really beautiful is how you can look at local smaller pictures, do some calculations or figure out theory there, and can you paste it back to give you a global result, right? And so what we are going to do here, the next result that we are going to look at is kind of dealing with this kind of situation. Uh, if we have a graph, let's say a very complicated graph. Now it's difficult. I have no idea how to even visualize second configuration space. I don't know how to calculate anything like uh, that there, but it's made up of smaller pieces. Uh, it's made up of a piece like this. It's made up of a piece like this. It's made up of an interval of something like this. Now these look less scary, right? They are, these are the things that hopefully we can calculate configuration spaces of. We already know the configuration space of interval. Configuration space of circle is another fun project to just sit and uh, play with. Um, 
And so how can we use the fact that we can actually do calculations here to paste things together and say something about the configuration space of the bigger graph? That's an interesting uh, problem. And um, algebraic topology more generally has tons of ways of solving this kind of problem by using machineries called long exact sequences or spectral sequences. Um, and um, I don't want to get into that, but what I'm going to tell you is uh, the kind of result that uh, uh, exists for graphs like this. And a brief idea of what are the kind of machinery that goes behind it. So the result is due to, uh, okay. Uh, so I don't know how to pronounce these names, uh, and this is going to be recorded, so I feel bad, but uh, Shte and Ludgetman um, worked on the following result, and it's such a fun result. So we are looking at a tree with loops. So precisely the kind of graph that I drew above. So this is my loop here, and everything else here is a tree, right? So I have a graph, which is a tree with loops. And n, let's say n is a natural number. Now I want to say something about the integral homology. So the result says that the integral homology hq so we are looking at the nth configuration space of the graph with coefficients in Z. If you're not familiar with it, just ignore it. So we are looking at the nth configuration space and we want to uh, compute its Qth homology, which is in some ways, very roughly some Q dimensional loop structure, okay? So um, then this is torsion free. And it's generated by products of basic classes. I, I will say what basic classes are in a second. For HQ greater than or equal to zero. So what is a basic class? A, roughly a basic class is a class in graphs like this. So these are the this is an example of star graph. This is a loop. This is an interval. And then there is another interesting graph called H graph. And uh, basic classes are classes, homology classes, in the first homology of these first homology of these uh, configuration spaces of these. Okay, so H1, let's just say H1, um, sorry, uh, um, HJ conf and I, GI. So J equals zero R1, so we are looking at the first R0 homology and GI is any of these kind of graphs. So these are the kind of graphs that you can kind of intuitively, I'm sure, imagine that any tree with a loop will be made up of something like these put together, right? And so what this result is telling you is that all the homology classes are actually generated by products of these kind of basic classes, which is a great result. And uh, tells us that actually it's very doable to break a, a bigger graph into smaller pieces and just know the uh, homology classes there and actually figure out all the homology classes in bigger graphs. Um, the machinery that they use for, a res uh, for this result is um, called spectral sequence. Um, spectral sequences are uh, another one of those things which uh, uh, every time I think of the first time you see it in a course, it looks a scary nightmare and then you actually play with it. And it's still a scary nightmare, but if you're lucky, it's fun to play with and you get good results. Uh, so 
the spectral sequence, what the spectral sequence is going to say here. So let me remove the result. One thing that Zoom doesn't compensate for is the need for big blackboards <laughs> for giving talks. There is no solution to that problem. So, okay. Uh, the kind of machinery we use is a spectral sequence. So this one, um, what this one says is that if you have an open cover, so let's say UI, uh, let's say VIs are open cover of graph. So what is an open cover? Open cover is you look at a graph and you look at it as a topological object. You look at it as a one dimensional CW complex, if that's a, a familiar terminology, right? Or a, as a one dimensional manifold, I, I, whatever makes sense for people. And then you cover it with open sets. Okay, so that's an open cover. Now an open cover for a graph will give you an open cover of the configuration space by using product topology. So um, UIs will be open cover of your configuration space. So spectral sequence is a kind of machine which is like a, a, a book. You put some data on the first page of the book, every page derives data from the previous page and so on, and the final page of the book gives you the result you want, kind of. So what this is telling me here, this spectral sequence is telling me that on the first page of the book, the thing I'm gonna need to input is the homology of various intersections of these open covers. And then, so basically, for example, if this was one of my open cover and this was another one of my open cover, then the intersection I'm interested in is this, which is exactly one of the interesting graph that we are talking about. So these are the graphs that are gonna come in the intersection. So you can see why uh, the final result is looking like the way it's looking. So this is gonna be my input information on the first page and what we are going to get on the final page, so which we say converges to is the configuration space we need. Oh, sorry, homology of the configuration space we need. Okay, so I hope I haven't lost a lot of people. I uh, Again, the, the aim is not to get familiar with the terminology. The aim is to, to look at this and be like, these are some very basic graphs that we don't know anything about in this area. And this is two years ago. This is the work two years ago where people are still figuring out these basic graphs. How do you actually compute things for these basic graphs? And um, my second uh, result is gonna talk about slightly a different scenario, which is the following. And this is due an Truman co Nutson. So what they do is they do, uh, um, they, so suppose I have a graph where one of the structure is this monstrosity. How do I, one of the things I can do to break it into smaller pieces is I can do an explosion at this vertex. So what does the vertex explosion tell me? Vertex explosion gives me a graph which looks like this. And now these are, this is more pieces, but all of these pieces are simpler. So we have now broken up our graph into simpler pieces. If there was a way in which we can use the configuration space calculation here to get a configuration space calculation here, that would be awesome. And what Anne Drummond Cole and Nudson do is that they give you a long exact sequence, which actually lets you do that. And so the result is as follows. 
So I'm gonna just look at, uh, just write down the long exact sequence. So a long exact sequence is relating different homology in different degrees of different graphs. And you, if you know some of the pieces, you can do the algebra to get the other pieces. That's uh, the hope. So, so this, uh, the graph where I have done my vertex explosion is gonna be gamma V. The graph without the vertex, original graph is gonna be gamma. So I look at the kth configuration space of gamma V and then I look at the kth configuration space of gamma. The third term in this exact sequence that I get is, I'm gonna talk about the terminal and the, the notation in a second, bear with me. So on. So what this is telling me is that the n plus one configuration space of, of this thing goes inside the n plus one configuration space of this. And then the kind of the third thing that we get is the uh, smaller configuration space. So this is the point to note here. This is a smaller configuration space, um, a bunch of them together. So if I were to calculate if I wanted to calculate, if my aim was to calculate this, the n plus one configuration space of this bigger graph, of this more complicated graph, then ideally what I have done here is tell you that if you can calculate this, which is n plus one homology of a more simpler graph, and if you can calculate this, which is a smaller configuration space, so less complicated. So if you can calculate this, then you can calculate this, this thing using the fact that you know this and you know this, okay? So this is the kind of idea that long exact sequences are built out of. Um, and this work tells, tells you that there is a, this strategy of vertex explosion actually gives you a long exact sequence that you can use to solve or calculate things. So one of the results that they um, get out of these kind of long exact sequences that they have been able to do is uh, they have been able to compute the full homology generators of configuration space of K4. K4 is complete four part graph. So again, note that what we are doing here is playing with the graphs, doing some very basic things, seeing if that actually algebraically makes sense in the way that you can actually get a long exact sequence or spectral sequence, or you can get ways of using this to actually compute things here, right? If you can do this, and then you can actually do some computations and computations are trees with loops, like how simple graphs are those? And K4, four-partite graph, something that you can tell a kid what a four-partite graph is, right? And so the, the opportunities in the subject are definitely uh, vast. And uh, one of the things that, um, that uh, I was lucky enough to get a chance to do as part of a project and uh, it, uh, we got a paper out of it and it was a lot of fun was uh, the following. So, um, so I'm, actually not going to write the full results, but uh, basically what we got in the last page was a long exact sequence. The long exact sequence that uh, um, Andrum and Kolnatsen got was purely an algebraic phenomena. 
what we did in this paper was go behind the scenes in the topological context, see what are the maps that are happening in the topological context. You remember the third term, which was a direct sum of many complicated things. What is the topology? What is, so it turns out there is a map topologically that, that which gives you a quotient space, and then you can actually induce an algebraic uh, long exact sequence out of those topological maps. So we worked through the uh, we worked through that, got a long exact sequence, and we worked through several more cases where we got long exact sequence. So we, there was a generalization, and there was a behind the scenes topological framework that we managed to tie in, which. Uh, added a, a lot of beauty to the result um, um, in terms of looking at the geometric side of things. So that was uh, uh, what I wanted to add as a final note. Um, uh, what I, uh, I, am, uh, I had planned uh, only this much for the talk, but I would be glad to see what questions people have and if they want me to send some sources, if they want to Discuss some, like anything you guys want, uh, what, what interested you here um, in the talk. So feel free to unmute yourself and let me know. Thank you so much, Sanjana, for your talk. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a great talk. Let me go ahead and stop recording. Um,